Hello, welcome to Ellen Ruth. So I'm Ellen and today we are making salt bars. Um, normally I make sea salt bars. Well, today we are making Himalayan pink salt. And this is not sea salt, <laughs> the Himalayan mountains. <laughs> um, this is a wonderful salt and it's so good for your skin. This is a fine grind, if you can see, very little granules. Um, so anyway, I will be sharing the full recipe in the description box below for my salt bars, which I think are so luxurious on your skin. And I get asked a lot, do they dry your skin out? No, they don't dry your skin out. There's something just uniquely amazing about the pH of the salt that after it goes through saponification with the, it just, it's actually moisturizing on your skin. It's an amazing thing. It makes a really creamy lather. Um, this has a very high coconut oil content and a high super fat to um, cover the high coconut oil content, but coconut oil will lather in salt water. And so you want a lot of coconut oil in this soap so you can still get a lather with it. Um, one of the things about salt soaps is that it hardens really quickly. Like if you do it in a loaf mold and want to cut bars, you have to watch it. And as soon as it firms up and starts to go through gel, you pop it out and you cut it. Otherwise, it'll just turn to crumbly bits. The good news is it's rock hard. They last. It's a very long lasting bar of soap. The downside is if you do a loaf mold, you got to watch it like a hawk. So what I do, because I tend to get busy and um, call me lazy, I don't know. I'm gonna use individual cavity molds and then I don't have to worry about cutting them. So I got these, aren't they adorable? Little sunflowers. I know we're coming into fall and winter, but this will cheer us up, right? If winter gets long, I've got these. Um, so we're gonna do some flower molds on these so that I don't have to worry about watching it and cutting it. So for the fragrance on these Himalayan pink salt bars, I will be using blood orange fragrant oil. Uh, it says that it discolors to a light yellow and that's fine because the color that I'm gonna be using is Siesta Sunset Orange from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Is that beautiful? To me, these just look, it looks bright and sunny with the blood orange is obviously very citrusy. It's a bright scent. Um, I just think these are gonna be wonderful. They're gonna brighten your day. If you get on into you know, winter blues, have some sunshine in your bathtub. I think it'll make your day better. <laughs> so anyway, let me get all these things pulled together, get my lye solution prepped. This will be an aloe vera lye solution, and I will also add some coconut milk powder in there too. So it'll be an aloe vera coconut milk, cause you know, why not? And uh, it's really great. Makes for a really good lather, makes for a wonderful bar of soap. Let me get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some Himalayan salt bars. So tempted to call them sea salt, but it's not from the sea. You know what I mean. Let's make soap. Okay, it's additives time. While well, my lye solution is cooling, let me tell you what's going on in my pot here. I have 48 ounces of coconut oil, six ounces of castor oil, three ounces of cocoa butter, and three ounces of shea butter. And that's what's in here. And now I'm gonna add my additives. Um, because these are all gonna be one color, I'll do the micas in here also. Uh, and then I have my salt, Measured off to the side here, I have 30 ounces of fine grind Himalayan salt. And we will add this in after we reach a light trace on this. But I just wanted you to know that was measured off and off to the side. So, additive time. Let me go ahead and get the fragrance in here right now. So we got the fragrance. Oh, that orange is so juicy. I love a good orange fragrance. Something just smells divine. And here is my beautiful mica. I'll go ahead and add that in here. And now for the fun stuff, I've got colloidal oats is going in. And kaolin clay. And these are two tablespoon scoops. So that's two tablespoons of each. And my coconut milk powder. So that's going in here also just because it's awesome. And uh, my, we'll talk about the lye solution, but that has aloe vera in it. We'll talk about that when we get to that step. But for right now, let me get all this dry ingredients blended into the oils and let them sort of absorb in there while the lye solution finishes cooling. And then we'll come back and uh, get moving on. So 
So it's time to add the lye, aloe vera lye solution into the oils. And I have my um, little molds up on a tray here so that I can move them if I need to, because these are floppy. And I think after I unmold, I'm probably gonna do a little mica on top. I had thought about doing some in the molds here, put a little brown mica to make, you know, like the sunflower seeds, but I was afraid it would sort of, when I poured the soap in, it would disperse out and muddy up. So I'm gonna wait till after we unmold to come in with my little brown mica and do some painting on there. And uh, we'll talk about that on the flip side when we get to it. But just so you know, I've got a game plan in my head. So everything's blended, fully absorbed. Here is my lye solution, which has a 50-50 split of aloe vera juice and distilled water. And I have 19 ounces of liquid in here. Uh, and I have 8.2 ounces of sodium hydroxide. And what I did was, uh, this has a or, sorry, a tablespoon of cane sugar dissolved in the aloe and water. Then I snipped up my tuss of silk fibers. Then I poured the sodium hydroxide over the top. So that's what's going on in here. It has sugar and silk dissolved in here. I don't use sodium lactate when I'm making a salt soap because it is already so hard, it does not need a single thing to make it harder. <laughs> so uh, the point now, I'm going to just bring this up to emulsion and uh, like a nice medium trace because I want the salt to suspend. You don't want the salt to just sink down to the bottom. So the point is to get sort of a nice light to medium trace, not too thick, because when you add the salt, it will start to firm up pretty quick. And you know, you don't want to dilly dally with salt soaps, but um, you definitely want it thick enough to suspend that beautiful salt. Otherwise you'll get, you know, half the bars are just all salt and the other bars don't have any and you know nobody wants that so and I'm just stirring and pulsing here I'm not doing a full-on um, I'm wondering this blood orange off a lot of times citrus fragrances are wonderful at slowing down trace not always though you know you can't count on it but um, a lot of citrus fragrances do tend to behave beautifully in soap and I was wondering if this would, I mean, yeah, we're not even at a trace yet, so. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and blend in the salt here since it's behaving really well. And we'll just get that blended in, make sure there's no salt chunks. I'll stick blend a little bit here. Got some air bubbles going, oops. All right, I've got a nice light trace going and the salt seems to be suspending. So, we'll go ahead and get this poured into our molds and I have extras off to the side if needed. I just think these are so pretty. It's literally been maybe six hours since I poured these and they are rock hard and ready to unmold. Isn't that fabulous? So I'm gonna unmold all of these and then I'll come back in and show you how I'm gonna do the little uh, sunflower seeds on the little individual bars. Oh, I'm so happy with these. They smell so refreshing. I think this winter, you know, these will cheer you up if you get the winter blues. <laughs> I think they're fabulous. I just love them. All right, let me get these unmolded and then we'll come back and do the little sunflower seeds. All 
right, let me show you what I've got going on in my little Dixie cup here. And this is just an extra makeup brush, clean brush. It's clean, never used, uh, and I clean it between uses. This is just designated for my soap room. It's just a tiny little brush. What I have in here is some chocolate brown mica with a little isopropyl alcohol. And I sort of made like a little mica paste with it. And I just have a tiny little painting brush here. So what I think I'm going to do is, let's grab these. Okay, let's talk about the size real quick before I paint. Um, these are a little thicker, but the circumference is smaller. So they are very close in weight. These are wider, a little more shallow but they come out to about the same weight. Just saying, with the different colors. So, all right, I've got my little paste on here, and these are beautiful, but I just wanna add a little something to the seeds in the middle. And of course, this will wash off the first time you use it, but I think when they're in the packaging, isn't that pretty? I love it, it's a little shimmery, a little pretty. So, I'm gonna do that to all of these. <laughs> and then they're going to go on the curing rack for four to six weeks. These need a full cure time. Even though they're nice and hard, they still need to cure. Uh, so let me get to it. I'm just back with an update. FYI, this is one of those do as I say, not as I do. These have only been in the mold six hours. I should have had gloves on when I was painting those. My hands are a little sensitive right now. Um, the lye is not fully saponified in there. So please, if you do this, wear gloves. And in the future, I will. I got lazy. When I unmold, I'm not thinking about gloves and I needed to stay on top of it. <laughs> so I apologize. I should have had gloves on when I was painting these. But all that being said and done, aren't they adorable? So happy. So anyway, just a word of caution. Please be safer than I was. Learn from me. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. So glove up when you're unmolding early. <laughs> 